Hello everyone, uh, this is Elvi Prasad. This is my uh, first uh, recording, uh, first video. Uh, today, a uh, topic I would like to discuss on the uh, Selenium Page Factory. Uh, the reason I uh, picked up this topic because um, so uh, whenever I browse uh, online about the uh, uh, design patterns and um, uh, the, even in the videos, YouTube videos also regarding the design patterns and people talk about the Page Factory and um, only only one way of uh, initializing the page factory when 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 uh, when we use the uh, page object model design pattern but as per my knowledge uh, there are uh, around five uh, ways um, we can initialize the page page or uh, initialize the page uh, using the page factory so uh, those uh, five ways uh, um, I, i'm i'm going to discuss in this today session so um, uh, before that, uh, to, to just to give an intro uh, towards this topic, um, so so Selenium uh, Selenium calls the page factory as a, a lazy initialization. Uh, that's because when we initialize a, a page object class, page factory doesn't uh, typically finds that element in HTML unless we create an action on that. The um, meaning, for example, we have a, a web element of a text box. So unless we say uh, that text text box web element dot send keys, it won't. This uh, the page factory doesn't uh, find that element. But when we initialize this uh, page factory, uh, the the page object with page factory, page factory will uh, initialize all the objects. But it creates a proxy of that objects, and it it just finds it when we when when it finds the action on that web element. So that is the reason. Selenium calls it as a lazy initialization, and uh, and and in which design pattern we use this page factory. Um, when I say in which design pattern means uh, we we know that the page object model can be designed in multiple ways, right? Um, one with the by class and uh, using the at find by annotations. So uh, when we use the uh, at find by by so all annotations uh, with so with the prefix with at find by. In that uh, uh, in that annotations, it is mandated that we have to use the page factory to initialize the page objects. Okay, so the uh, second thing is about the scope. I, I wanted to limit the discussion towards only the initialization initialization part of page factory. And out of scope is uh, anything beyond the page factory is out of scope, just to limit the discussion. And uh, yeah, uh, to coming back to the um, core component. The um, as I said, um, uh, we can initialize the page factory in five different ways. One is the initialize in constructor. So we all know that, right? Within the page class, we create a constructor and initialize within that. And the second way is initialize when required. We'll see that initialize by returning the class object. And the fourth and fifth one, the one, the, these are the two which I like it to use: custom global global initialization predefined global initialization so let's quickly get into the practical part of it so um, before that uh, the the HTML page which I picked is a Facebook and I am I, I will be using only the first name last name and the mobile number or the email only these three text fields I'm using okay um, we can use anything I uh, just to limit the uh, focus I just use these three web elements I mean these three uh, objects from the HTML and uh, I have a I, I, I created a lightweight project and I will be using the at test annotations uh, which are de derived from the uh, test G framework so in this project uh, under source test uh, I have uh, three packages actions pages and tests uh, just to brief about this the test package will have the at test uh, annotation um, test methods in the class and the pages will have the uh, specific uh, uh, page level uh, page objects and the actions specific to that uh, page objects and the register actions is something uh, where I am storing the uh, browser launch part and the browser quit part uh, typically you can call it as a base class where the where people uh, uh, inherit this base class into the test uh, test classes but just uh, just for the time being I made it as a register actions here what I did is I created a static block and I, I was calling the um, the launch method the launch method is responsible to um, um, you know um, initialize the web driver with the uh, defined uh, browser driver and to navigate to the URL 
and that I called into the static block. That is because when we create an object of this class, uh, uh, in fact, when we create an object of any class, the JVM first executes so the static blocks from that class, then it executes the constructor. So that's how the execution happens. So, so that is the reason I created a, a static block here. Okay and this class will only have the um, and i and also have the uh, a method which returns the uh, driver object okay and um, yeah so here uh, for the time being i already uh, captured the uh, you know the, the locator and the locator values of the uh, you know the uh, the first name last name and the mobile number or the email these three uh, text fields and um, i also created the um, I also created the corresponding methods for that each web element as these are text fields so what we can do is uh, uh, perform the send keys to input the uh, user data so corresponding uh, methods also has it written here so as we are talking about the initial uh, the initialization part initialize initialize with the constructor so let's see how we do that okay so this is my page class within this only I'll create a constructor of it and it is my constructor and i'll call the uh, page factor init elements i i pick the last um, method which accepts a true arguments for driver and the page okay and i will pass the web driver as an argument and let's import this web driver done okay so now we have a initialization part which will initialize this page objects and also we have the corresponding actions on this each web element okay now how do we use this in a test case okay let's get into that so here i have a uh, test class so where i will be calling the at test uh, methods initialize uh, in constructor okay so let's import this right okay and uh, yeah so before this what i would like to do is i create an object of uh, actions so that my um, you know the static block gets executed to launch the browser okay import import actions okay We can we can also do that you know the that browser the launch part we can have it into in a, in a base class and uh, wrap it with a you know uh, annotation call before suit or before method or before test just for i i just already did this so i just want i don't want to change that okay so this this uh, line of statement will take care of the launching of the browser now we need to call the methods of the implementation right so that is in the register page okay so um, I'll create an object of that register page. Okay, and um, okay, and we have to pass the web driver, right? So that web driver, as I said, we have this method in this here, which is a static. So I'll call it here. Instruction start driver. Okay, now we got the web driver as well and import it. Uh, this to actions. Oh, not actions, right? It's here. It is the next one. Okay. Uh, here it is. Right. This to page, import this to page. Done. So now we have this page. Let's put it here to call the input first name and pass the user data here. I'll put my name and my last name. I'll put it as my surname as initial initial as controller. I will send the email some dummy email. Okay. So what happens? What is this other? Syntax error is it right? Okay, so what happens if we execute it right? So JVM has this as this both are created at class level. 
JVM first uh, gets into this class and there's a static block here so JVM will execute this thing which will initially typically launches the browser that navigates to the given URL then JVM will get into this and uh, as the page factor is within the constructor so this uh, initialization will be gets triggered and when we are using this uh, page or uh, page class object reference and the, the JVM will get into this method and into this web element it will now the page factor will now find this web element in HTML and performs the send keys so that's how the execution works now right but we have to also consider the closing of the um, closing of the browser right so that uh, we have it in a uh, tear down okay right so let's execute it and find out okay and just ng so uh, it will it will uh, it found the um, static block it's um, on the browser now launching the browser maximizing the browser navigate wait for the page load then initialize the page factory then get into each method to input the user details so it's still loading wait for a moment um, so yeah the load is done it's executed and yeah so total done one no failures so it's passed right uh, it's passed so this is one of the way right and um, let's comment it out uh, okay and um, let's see what is the next one initialize when required okay so in this case okay uh, instead of updating this uh, the same class again and again what i will do is i'll 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 create a copy of this uh, page class okay okay copy is done so constructor this part is done we are not talking about it now so I will I will make these methods as a you know static so that I can access directly with the class reference. Okay, I'll I'll tell you why we are getting that either. That is because we are using a non-static modifiers into the static. So make the uh, make these web elements also static. Okay, done. It's it's not necessary that you have to make it as a static. Even even non-static modifiers also. We can use it uh, in the test case by creating the object of that class. So test public void initialize um, when required, right? So call that method register page to dot input first name. My name is Prasad. Register page two dot in it last name as Sanchala and uh, register page two dot input register page dot two dot uh, email as test at email dot com done and call the um, quit part also okay. So with this code, the browser will get launch. The method uh, will execute, but we have to initialize that, right? So that initialization, I'm doing it here. So initialize when required. Start driver and pages register page three dot class, right? Uh, this step is right. Three. Sorry, two. Okay. Right. Uh, yes. So we have the browser launch part here handled and we initialized the page. So this method should work. So let's give it a try. 
So again, the JVM will trigger the static block to launch the browser. Browser found. So it launched the browser and it maximizes it and navigate it to that URL. The page factory will initialize the uh, objects in that page which is provided and it will start entering the uh, input, the user input. So total test run failure is zero, so it's passed, right? So to initialize when required got passed. Okay, so this is the second way of initializing the page factory. Uh, it's only when required, but I don't recommend this because today we have only one method for the demo, but in, in the real time, we will be having many methods, right? So uh, repeating this line of a statement for each class and um, you know that's not a recommended way of doing it. So um, we have to do it in a uh, global way that we will discuss. So let's comment it. Okay. What is the third way? Initialize by returning the class object. Okay. So initialize by returning the class object. So let's. So as we have it here, then create a copy of uh, the same class, page object class, copy, paste it, and paste it, okay. So this is the initially what we discussed, constructor. I removed it, remove the imports also. And here, uh, write a test method. Uh, let me pull it here. I'll write it here so that it will be easy to understand. Public void initialize by returning class object, right? Okay. So, um, so now um, what we do, we have to create a class object, right? Class object, uh, a page object, uh, we have to create a class object for that page object. So, which is a page three? We just created we just a page three. Page three. I I'm not putting this because I just a page three. See, if we uh, we already done this right inside this uh, class, we created a constructor here. We we created a constructor and we passed the drive object here, which we already discussed. So that's why I don't want to do this again. So instead, what I do is I call the page factory here. I use the last method. Register actions dot driver for the driver object, and uh, register page three dot class is the class. So we know that the page factory will return the class object which was which was passed as a second argument, right? So uh, I am taking that as an advantage and returning the the object into the same page class, right? So using this uh, um, class object variable, I will say input first name as Prasad, input the last name as my surname, Sanchala, input email as mail.com and we have to call the tear down right ah, okay so what happens here with the jvm execution this will take part of the uh, static block which will launch the browser and uh, this line of a statement will do two things it will initialize the op uh, given objects of this class and also the same will be returned into this class so that we can use the methods here so let's run it as a test and see and see how it executes. So it found the um, the static block. So it found the browser now. Now it launches the browser and maximizes it. Now it gets to that URL. Wait till load and the page factory got initialized and it will get into that each implementation method to input the user details uh, one by one right so yeah so this is also done total test run failure zero and uh, in, initialized by the returning class object is passed right this is also done okay um so what is the fourth one fourth one is custom global initialization okay 
so let me comment this custom global initialization how do we do that okay so close this one let's create a copy of it and uh, paste it here okay fourth one right fourth one remove this one okay remove the imports as well now create a new test method okay public wired custom global lies okay so um, so let's in initialize this so for that I will create a new class here for the custom global initialization I will call it as a global initialization class and in this class I will create a static method which returns me the uh, page object of that class okay now it is fourth right register page four this is my method name and i am returning the same object here page factory dot init elements driver register actions dot driver object got created and we have to hard code the page here which is nothing but this one right wonderful so in this uh, now we got it so now call the uh, now write it um, call those implementation methods from the page object class so we have to start it from the global thing because it is executing it is initializing right what is it's not required it's not our thing okay global what is it well initialization okay it's a spell mistake yeah that's why it's not coming what happened what is this other little type globalization must be defined in one file of course and um, global bal okay and um, yes global initialization dot the page dot input first name okay global initialization dot class object dot input last name this is my surname now again global initialization dot page object dot input email Test at uh, mail.com and uh, close the browser. Okay. So, what? Okay, syntax. Right. So, remove the imports, unwanted imports, and execute this. So, as the first line of this class is the register actions, which is having a static block. It, it will get triggered first uh, it will find the browser and it will launch the browser maximize and um, navigate to that url it waits the till load in the meanwhile the global initialization gets triggered where it is initializing the page factory along with the term page object class and then the methods gets triggered with uh, which will do the send case yes and um, test case executed one is passed custom global initialization got passed right see uh, the uh, the advantage with this um, uh, with this is if say we will be creating the page uh, page object classes of many things right so for example a dashboard dashboard page and for that we will give it as a dashboard method and here we will give it as a dashboard class object right and like that likewise uh, we will we'll have so many page object classes uh, methods will be created here which will be each each method will have the um, hard coding with the uh, i mean the, the page factory second argument will get hard coded with the 
return type of that um, specific page object class by keeping it in every, everything it in one class so we can access it um, globally by, which is declared as it is static and for the reference purpose also it is very much easy and uh, maintenance as well right so that is the reason i i prefer this way of doing it custom global initialization okay so the next one is um, so what is the next one the next uh, topic and the last topic is predefined global initialization Predefined means the Selenium itself is, uh, you know, uh, um, providing uh, this way of uh, global initialization. So that how it is means. Um, let's create a copy of this uh, page class again. I don't do anything. I just for the reference purpose, uh, I just keep on creating it and uh, just to avoid the confusions. Okay. So the constructor part which we already discussed. So I'm removing the depend on imports, unwanted imports, done. And this is we previously used it. I will remove that. So I'll comment out this part. Uh, let's keep this previous time, but I will comment it. So how do we do a predefined global initialization? Okay, predefined global initialization. So we'll create it as a static and we declare it as a return type as a T and I say get page object. Okay. And in the argument, what I pass is a proxy, a proxy class, proxy page object class. Okay. And uh, I'll do that page factory initialization here. In, and here what the method which I, now I don't use the last method which will uh, just uh, accept the web driver and the page object instead what I use is a page uh, a proxy proxy class object here this method okay so here um, we have to pass the driver which I already have it in the static and uh, the same variable I will pass it here okay and uh, yes so uh, the same thing i will return okay so now what i do is i create a public static and what is the latest uh, class here this star for page five right so this one okay, this guy i'll call it here this star page five as a return type and um, H5 is my method and um, and call this method get uh, page object and uh, pass the register page by dot class register page okay done so i'm just using this method so this method is it's from the uh, selenium itself and i'm calling the proxy method inside the init web elements the third one which accepts the proxy of the class okay that proxy i'm passing it here you know so let's call this in the method okay and uh, test method public void um, predefined uh, global initialization okay and global initialization static method and uh, not the get page register okay so register and uh, init first name And uh, instead of typing, let me copy paste this. Okay, so input last name. And uh, email, right? Input email as test at mail.com. And call the close browser. Okay okay so let's execute and see 
um, so it finds the static block to launch the browser and um, the browser that to find uh, yes browser found it launches the browser now and it maximizes it and now gets to the uh, given URL once the page is loaded it initializes the uh, page factory uh, the page object class which we provided and start inputting the details based on the methods implementation uh, which we provided in that uh, test method so it's still loading it's still loading okay now let's see if there's any exception here so far no exception it's executing oh it all it's already executed right so predefined global initialization which is also passed so this this confirms that we can initialize the page factory in five different ways only we can use the page factory only if we use the i mean if we use the design pattern of capturing the objects using get find any of these three annotations okay in that case we have to use the page factory and you can initialize it any of the given methods okay this is very much important for the interview uh, concept because um, it, it, this is a very common question right uh, everybody will ask uh, even in the framework design part uh, how do you create the page design patterns right so at that time if you answer that um, the, the page factory initialization part we do this way but i also know the other ways how to do and if you can explain each and everything in detail that will give a value right and um, um, th that's all for the today's discussion but in the next uh, next video i would like to discuss about the uh, different ways of page object model uh, how, how do we design this uh, uh, design pattern uh, with multiple ways of designing and also i would like to uh, discuss on the uh, selenium uh, execution with the docker and this current um, you know the um, the, the current discussed uh, topic uh, i have it uh, available in the uh, git repository so let me open that kit come on yeah let me open the browser right okay github 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 right so so page factory initialization right so this is the one different ways it's already checked in and available uh, if anybody wants to just explore it and see you can give it right uh, just to remind uh, again uh, this is just uh, created to explain about the page, page factory it, it doesn't speak about the framework uh, browser executions and all that it, it doesn't talk about that it's just about the page factory initialization uh, different ways of doing it okay um, that's that's all about these uh, uh, today recording uh, thanks for uh, watching it out and please like and subscribe it for the upcoming videos to get a notification on that thank you thanks for your time